Hello and welcome to the first of many awesome vlogs, that is, video log of my adventures in game development. Now, this game that I'm creating is going to be a space action RPG. What is that? You know, it's not too clear because there aren't too many of them out there. But it's basically going to be an RPG with a spaceship, and there's going to be levels and skills and bosses and dodging boss mechanics and all that good stuff. It'll be single player, easier to make, and so I'm going to explain a little bit about history and why I'm going this route. So when I was around eight or nine, I had this thing called AOL. Probably no one knows what that is anymore, but I would sign on and click this games tab and download and play pretty much every game that was on the AOL games tab. I believe Warcraft 1 was a demo offered there, and that's how I got into the Warcraft series. And one of the games was a game that I was entirely unique to me because it was, I don't know, space and an RPG. It's called Escape Velocity. Um, for the Mac only, way back, way back then, but they've created a few more times and it's on Windows as well, so you could Google that and check the shareware demo out for that. So I'm kind of aiming for something similar to Escape Velocity. It's basically a space RPG where you start off in a little cockpit or little shuttle and you take on missions and explore the galaxy and earn money and buy new ships and new weapons and explore and kill space pirates and all that good stuff. So I'm kind of aiming for something similar in scope to that but also to add on some additional things so it's going to be more action oriented, more fast paced gonna be more skills and levels think those things didn't really exist for that game and it's gonna be more skill based I guess there's gonna be barrel rolls um, loop-de-loops things more maneuverability skills that allow you to dodge um, allow you to you know mo maneuver and dodge and things like that so that's kinda the motivation behind this game so there's gonna be skills inventory global map where you uh, jump to various systems and complete quests. Alright, so what is the technology behind this? So we're going to, or I'm going to explain a little bit about the technology I'm using C++. I'm using a free game engine, free open source 2.5D engine called IndieLib, which I got from Wikipedia, or I found out about it from Wikipedia. Um, so we're going to be using that. It's basically a wrapper for various um, C++ libraries for encapsulating 2 and 3D graphics using DirectX 9. So that's IndieLib. And then sound isn't included in that, so I'm using another uh, library for that called Erklang. And then I'm scouring the interwebs for various art and sound assets. And those will be added in the credits section as they are added to the game. So that's a little bit about the technology behind it. And so I'll first explain a little bit about how it's implemented. It's a finite state machine. Right now we're in the... the uh, main menu state and basically that renders and displays a six buttons which are implemented as a class with a hover state and things like that so all of the buttons and windows and various GUI things are all encapsulated in a single class so that makes it easier to just create uh, buttons and windows when I need them so let's move on to the character creation. When we click New Game, we're prompted to enter a name for our new character. 
And so let's call it something very unoriginal. And kind of decided this isn't a very original name, so I'm going to delete this. And it might seem pretty simple, but the blinking cursor and all of the characters were implemented. No library was implemented this for this, so I had to... I mean, the font is basically a spreadsheet of different characters, and the blinking cursor has to move a certain number of pixels based on the character's width, so if we're writing a bunch of little eyes, the blinking cursor doesn't move a bunch, but if we're writing W's, blinking cursor has to move a lot. So, I don't know, that's just a little detail, programming detail for you there. So let's, I'll just go ahead and enter in my normal in-game alias, Rorikin, and Pandapone about and we will accept. We are sure that we want to name our character this. Click no, takes us back. But yeah, that is the confirmation GUI. So right away, we're jumped into this sprawling world of flying, strange, bark colored cubes. <laughs> These are just placeholders for asteroids. Um, you can click on them, and that opens up or that shows a targeting thing but that's basically just to get our name it doesn't target our weapons or anything I mean eventually the targeting system will target probably different skills be used for different skills and missiles homing missiles and things like that but right now it's just to see more information about what that object is and so we can click on all of our objects and learn more about them and basically the asteroids are, there are a few different things. There are 3D meshes, and then there is collision circles. Let's render that for you there. It is, basically all these circles fall around these 3D objects, and collision's all done in 2D because, I mean, 3D doesn't make sense for a 2D top-down game. So it's a lot easier to do collision that way. And so when we fire at an asteroid, a few different things happen. One, the health bar pops up, which slowly fades away after a short bit of not hitting the asteroid. So that's just an indication of the health. Also, particle effects fly out. I've implemented a particle system that randomizes uh, particles. They're basically creates a random number of particles, well not a random number, but could be a random number of particles and just flies them out in different directions and um, the third thing is the text shows the amount of damage we do to the asteroid so here you can see it's kinda different numbers pop up there when we hit the asteroid and when we blow the asteroid up bunch of particles fly out there. So that's kind of my way of implementing explosions right now because I don't have any uh, sprite sheets that simulate explosions. So it's easier just to do it with a bunch of particles. Um, so yeah, that is the basics of destroying asteroids. So I want to point out a few things. There are a number of cameras being used. The GUI camera itself, which just displays the static GUI elements. The minimap camera, which is basically just a zoomed out version of the world, and it follows our ship around and displays 2D versions of all the objects, so the asteroids are represented by little gray circles, and our ship's represented by a green triangle. And our laser bullets are actually rendered on there as well, on the minimap. It's kind of cool. And the planet, which should be back here, hopefully. Uh, also, when you shoot too much, you can overheat your weapon, as was just seen. So apparently I lost the planet, but that's good. Oh, there it is. So yeah, the planet's on the radar as well. 
So I imagine each level will have a planet or space station that you can use to land on and buy new weapons or ships and get new quests and things like that. So they kind of act as towns, so to speak, and basically you'll fly around at different systems and some systems will have no planets, so they'll just have probably enemies that you have to defeat to move on to the next systems. So yeah, that's that's kind of the idea behind the levels that will be used in this game. And so I was talking about cameras initially, I think, so we have our GUI camera, our minimap camera, which is a zoomed out version. Then we also have 2D and 3D cameras that are constantly following our ship around. And basically the engine needs a 3D camera to render 3D objects and a 2D camera to render 2D objects. So we have to have both cameras following around the whole time. So that's a little bit about cameras. Um, yeah, so that about covers what I've done so far. And I'll certainly be working on this more, and I'll probably be doing a map system and levels in the near future. And, yeah, so feel free to drop me a line or ask questions about the game or any implementation details that you might be wondering about. And I'll get back to you for sure. And uh, look forward to more video logs in the future. And that's it for now. Alright, see you guys later.